Welcome to this episode of the Marketing Guides for Small Business podcast. I'm Ian, and I'm joined by Ken, Paul, Dan, and Jen. And the topic yeah. we're talking about uh, today is measuring and optimizing your funnel success. In this online funnel series, we've explored what it takes to build an online funnel and the different components, technologies, and strategies that go into building a funnel. But the ultimate goal of the funnel is to drive action and sales. So today we're gonna to explore how we can measure the success and optimize our funnels to squeeze even more profit out of them. So let's get started. Everybody ready? Yeah. Yes. Do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I'll start with Dan here. Uh, we, Dan, you yeah. it's Ken who gets the, 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 the lead off spot. All right. <laughs> Uh, Dan, we've learned that even the simplest <laughs> funnels have a bunch of moving parts. Uh, can you remind us of what those main components are as a refresher? Yes. And I think, though, you guys are going to have uh, to, 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 if I miss any, do jump in. But I do think, you know, first of all, I have to preface this. The funnels themselves, we, we get it, are kind of overwhelming when you look at them in the full context of the, it can feel like you're building the space shuttle. So, um, you know, I, I do think that you, you kind of have to, for, for me, I kind of have to break them down and build them bit by bit. So I do think, again, you want to start probably with uh, a traffic store. You know, and what we call as the traffic store is kind of where this is your engine. Where's some stuff, you know, coming to um, gonna gonna shoot out of. So, you know, that could be Facebook ads, uh, Google ads. It can be, um, you know, some some different types of uh, paid mechanisms that really start the process going. Um, from there, um, you're you're looking at uh, taking it to uh, what could be a landing page? Um, you know, there's there's a, a number of areas where you could do retargeting. Um, there are places where you want in the landing page you want to have probably some kind of downloadable um, that helps capture some information in terms of uh, name, email, phone number, possibly, um, and. Ultimately, you're driving them to the destination of, um, you know, of, of, of trying to not only market to them regularly, but really to get them to buy in for the first time. Um, you know, the destination does not have to be um, like a, an ongoing engagement right off of a funnel. It can be like a try, you know, like the try before you buy can be the end destination. And then you can kind of go from there to see uh, offline how you can convert that person into an ongoing engagement. So I do think, you know, the most important part of this that you want to think about, though, first first and foremost, I, I suggest looking at the traffic store, the in-between email sequences that you might do or text funnel sequences, as well as um, the landing page. Get that much down, okay? then worry about how am I going to, you know, if they don't fill out a form, how am I going to retarget them? Things like that. Um, that's kind of where I would begin. But yeah. you guys can jump in too of any, of any other things you might add to that. Yeah, I'll jump in. I would begin at the offer. You've got to okay. have a compelling offer or it's yeah. not worth anything. So, you know, you've got to think about, you know, a, a person in a particular situation that has a particular pain or a specific need, you know, that they're looking for an answer for. And, and that is gonna be the targeting that you can use to, for your traffic store, right? So, but, but it's gotta be, the, it's gotta be I, I think the best offer is a, is a low risk, usually a low cost, and a paid offer is perfectly fine. Sometimes it, maybe it, it needs to be free as well, uh, but, a, but a low risk, low cost, high value, and especially high perceived value offer to get people to want to go ahead and take that call to action and 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 start to work their way into the funnel. Yeah. Anybody else? <laughs> we, we, we used to say- Yeah, the offer, the offer is, yeah, you're absolutely right. That is a great, great point. 
And we used to say the offer is the thing that gets people off their couch, but now you don't have to get off your couch. They can <laughs> answer your offer while on the couch. So maybe it's the thing that gets them to press click, right? Um, anything else on on uh, components or elements that we've covered that you want to make sure we we uh, talk about before we jump into the the measurement and the tracking aspects? I, I would like to add one more thing: yeah. the landing page. Uh, once you've got a landing page, you want to take somebody to a thank you page because that's going to be critical for measuring. It's a great point. It's a great point. And that leads really nicely into a question for Jen. Uh, mm -hmm. When it comes to measurement and tracking the success of a funnel, what key metrics would you normally track for clients or for yourself? Well, yeah. Um I saw this question in order to get prep for it. And I just thought that, um, so I always think about, you know, our listeners, right? The small business owner that is already overwhelmed doing everything to keep their business running. And so then you add in marketing and then you add in, oh, we got to do the, the, you know, the analytics and you can just see their eyes glaze over it, that, or you can see like, oh, what are the numbers? What are the best practices? What are the numbers my funnel has to reach? Otherwise it's all, it's all, you know, terrible. And I, I, I just want to answer that question and just, back it out to four things you need to think about and you know and, and don't make it any more complicated than that until you've got you know you've got the comfort with these so the four questions are so where are people coming from right so you find where you know are your ads working where is the traffic coming from is it where you thought it would be coming from is it where you paid for it to be coming from where is it coming from so are my ads working are they not are they very expensive are they not so that's one one question out of the four uh, number two are they engaging once they get in the funnel are they you know making that click are they downloading that white paper are they downloading the you know the checklist are they you know engaging in the offer it, is that working because that's part of the process um, the next one is are they opening your emails? So in a funnel, after the original um, deal is is accepted, so let's just, I've got white papers on the mind here. We've been doing white papers this past week for a lot of clients. So let me stick with that one, a very B2B, right? They download the white paper. Uh, we've got an email sequence going out to them afterwards. <clears throat> Excuse me, are they opening those emails? That's another point to check. You know, are they, or did they just come for the, the white paper? They uh, unsubscribe and that's it. They don't want to hear from you again. So that's number three. Are they opening your emails? And number four, are they, you know, are they buying? Are they taking the next step with your company? Uh, you know, no one downloads a white paper or a checklist just to download a white paper or a checklist. They've got a problem and they either need a product or a service or some advice to fix that problem. So are they, you know, have you done a good enough job building trust with them that they're going to take the next step and ask for more information, hop on that discovery call, buy the product, that kind of thing. So those are the four things I would look at for actions. And once you can answer those questions, yes, no, someone's taking action, they're not, then you can start to look at the numbers. Because for example, if the numbers are zero, no one's engaging, then, you know, you have a funnel problem you got to go fix. You don't have a real an analytics problem you have to worry about. So that would be my recommendation, those four points. I love it. Yeah. And, and you know, the last one you said is, is the number that every business owner cares about, and that's the sale, right? And so that's, <laughs> it's almost like working back from there sometimes, because if that number is good, a lot of us as business owners, we should care because we can tweak things and make them better. But sometimes we're like, it's good, it's working. I'm getting sales and leads and this is fantastic. Yeah. So that's yeah. awesome. I love how you boiled that down to four key metrics, Jen. And, and you know, it, it is really some of those checkpoints. It's, it's you know, you're absolutely right. Like we tend to look at the end, you know, I, I get it with the sale, why we would look at that obviously, or why they come in the door. But it's kind of in between that, that one part, there's always this key moment before the sale where it's like, if I can clear that with them, nine times out of 10, they're gonna be a, mm -hmm. a sale. Um, and if if you hit that in one of those checkpoints that Jen just said, then that's almost what you should be aiming for even before like measuring the sale. Like how many times did you get through that key point? Because you're gonna close them after that, no doubt. I love that, Dan. That's, that's a really good point um, that it's the percentages between those 
gates that they're passing through. So if those are those four things that you mentioned, Jen, are gates, and and the percentages between those are really important too, because those tell us um, what's the return on investment at each of those stages, and and where do we need to tweak. So that's that's awesome, um, Paul. Uh, it sounds like there's lots of things we can track and measure, and and Jen gave us four key metrics. Um, but as the people that actually build and work within these systems, we know there's um, so many elements involved. Um, how how would someone go about tracking and reporting on these things? Well, hopefully the system that you're using would have that built in, because when you're talking about a funnel, yeah, that you could use analytics and there's platforms out there that will do that. But if the system you're using doesn't have that built in, maybe you should look at a different system because like Jen said, you, you, you want to track, you really want to track each stage of that funnel. And you want to know if you have a disproportionate number of people dropping out at a certain stage, you want to be able to look at that stage of the funnel. So that, I mean, that, that's the short answer is the system you're using should provide that for you. I mean, you'll have to set it up, but it should have that capability built in. And what's an example of a system like that, Paul? Uh, we use local leads, mm -hmm. personally, um, and it's a very comprehensive all-in-one platform that we use. It, it has call reporting built in. It has uh, different, all kinds of different attributions built in. You can track your funnels. You can track your emails. It will give you your email stats like Jen was talking about, your open rate, that's important. Uh, it allows you to have people easily unsubscribe. It allows you to t also track the, uh, the, the ad um, platform that you're using in many cases as well. That's awesome. And, and, yeah. yeah. And for small business owners, um, you know, you hear a lot out there about uh, click funnels and lead funnels and all these different platforms. Do they do similar things? They do similar things, but they're not as comprehensive. Yeah. A lot of times they'll do one or two things and they're fairly good at that. But then you're kind of back to you have this system does this and this system does that. And now you're in a situation where you have to kind of make them work together. We're kind of going that through that with a client right now. They have an estimate program that they use, but they want to get that information in into local leads, which you're also using. So it sometimes it's unavoidable, but keep in mind the more different systems that you use to do different things, the bigger your integration headache is going to get. Mm -hmm. And and I gotta say, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna call out one of those by name that you mentioned. Okay, I'm gonna right. say this: some of those that you mentioned, at least one of them, is really good at trying to sell everything in the first touch. If you act now, and you will have your funnel bazooka that you can have for an extra forty nine, and then this, and then this, and then this, and then this. I think that is so overwhelming for a business owner who's already overwhelmed by the idea of funnels in the first place. That's where you you talk to a, a Ken Tucker or um, any any of us or any uh, consultant who can really sit down with you and say, okay, what is it you're trying to do? You know, because you can get like the sales machine coming at you with some of those, and it can sound like. We've all heard this where you, oh, just flip a switch and the leads will come through the funnel and the, the funnel will somehow, you know, pop up out of nowhere. It doesn't work like that. And even if it did, you still have to maintain it. And so I think having a real person next to you to help you construct these, these funnels is, is what you need because uh, that sales machine is, is pretty hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're very good at funnels, aren't they? <laughs> they're very good at funnels. I, I won't take anything away from them. You know, they're 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 good at what they do, um, but I do think that sometimes that end game is is tough. Like to to where it's like, ooh, they're really hitting me up with the hard sell. 
it's not that their product is bad. It's not. Um, it's that you may need sort of a non buy this right now uh, kind of approach from a regular <laughs> down to earth person, you know, locally. Right. That's that's something that a lot of uh, my clients talk about, but I'm sure yours do as well, is that uh, when you um, are consulting with clients, you in essence become their guide by, and help them avoid the latest shiny object and actually navigate. You know, we're all bombarded by a million emails a day with offers. And a lot of those are marketing offers if we're a small business owner. And so, um, you know, clients often comment that, you know, uh, thanks Ian for helping me through this or, yo, I just got this email. Is this a good offer or not? No, it's not. And this is why. And if it's coming from a Gmail account, don't buy it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. That's a great point. Yeah, that's the biggest thing that we see is these, if if you're getting an offer and it's not coming from a domain-based email, that should be several red flags right there. Yeah. Done. Big time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a full stop for me. Um, Ken, uh, Paul talked about this a little bit, but maybe you can go into more depth about um, the tools that are available for the small business owner to use to consolidate um, the, the tracking and the reporting and maybe even all of the funnel work, um, or maybe give us a picture of what it's like without these tools first, and then what it's like with these tools as well. Yeah. So. Um like like Paul said, we we we've created our own system that's really a sales and marketing operating system called Local Leads IQ. I'm going to add it's the full name is Local Leads IQ. Got to jump that jump in and add that, Paul. Um, so, so you can you know that's that's our ecosystem that we've created and we've designed it specifically to answer the mail for the question that you're talking about here. You can uh, piece together a lot of different solutions. I mean, you can have a call tracking system. You can have you know your form system, you can have your email marketing system, your text message marketing system, and you can pull all of that data in together. You know your uh, your your Google Analytics, you know your your ad platform analytics, all that kind of stuff. You can pull that all together into a tool like Agency Analytics, you know where it's going to integrate multiple data feeds to create, uh, you know that that dashboard, if you will, of all of the key metrics. Um, it, it's it's going to be hard to drill down into the funnel specifics for that, but it's going to give you the visibility of the analytics. Then you're going to have, uh, you know, da Google Data Studio is another great option. You know, there are plenty of different platforms that are out there that does that. Um, you know, the biggest thing for me is, you know, if you're if you're running a funnel, as Dan mentioned, you're probably using something from the traffic store. You know, some kind of a paid strategy, maybe it's your past customer list. Uh, but you know, you want to be able to measure and track that specifically to see how is that performing inside your funnel. Mm -hmm. um, and and so then you want to you want to measure, you know, not only did somebody click on the offer, did they did they, you know, did they actually claim the offer? And if it's, you know, an opportunity to buy, did they actually redeem it? So you need to measure that all, you know, throughout the whole process. It depends on the complexity of the funnel. It depends on what you're selling. You know, if you're selling something that you know is really designed to get people to buy because they already know, like, and trust you, or just honestly because the sales cycle is not very long, you probably don't need to have super complex tools. But your, the tools that you're using should be able to measure the key outcomes. So if you're trying to drive, uh, a, a, you know, purchase behavior through a text message marketing funnel. Um, you know, driving people to a landing page, sending them there from maybe a Facebook ad, that text message marketing platform had better be able to tell you how much revenue are you generating per campaign and even tying it back to how much a particular customer is buying from you through your funnels. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll know that because of the, you know, the, the, the cell phone number uh, that receives the text messages. So. Um, you know, it, it really just depends on the complexity of the funnel, what you're trying to accomplish with the funnel. If you're trying to get somebody to download a checklist or a, a case study to get them into the top of the funnel, um, you know, then then um, your nurture activities are going to become much more important for you to measure to see, OK, well, I got them to raise their hand and say, OK, I'm interested. And 
this thing that can help me solve, you know, an annoying little problem that I've got. And, and so uh, if, can you take them from your email or your text message, um, you know, nurture sequence to next steps to take more concrete action, to download something else, to raise their hand and say, okay, I'm ready to talk. I'm ready to have a conversation. Let's schedule, you know, some kind of a discovery session or let's schedule some kind of a paid, you know, assessment that again is a, a fairly low cost, low risk to them, high value kind of a thing. And I would add to that, that the, the very best tool they have at their disposal is people like us who actually eat, live and breathe this kind of stuff every day. So if if they're hiring someone to build their funnel, they don't have to worry about the technology behind it. The, the consultant, the agency, the funnel builder can actually report on whatever key metrics they determine and, and like the, the metrics that Jen gave, anybody should be able to report on those. There's a lot of noise, right? I mean, there are there are so many things that you can measure that you could wind up measuring things that are just not important. You know, if you're going to be do, doing anything from a Facebook ad perspective, um, you may get really excited because you see a lot of people liking the ad, the post that you used as the basis for the ad. A like is a vanity metric. It really doesn't mean very much. The, the, the gold is, did they click? Did they, you know, go in, get into the funnel and take the actions you wanted them to? So, uh, you know, again, it, just because they click on a link inside of an email, not very meaningful. Uh, it's really did they take those actions that are leading them to more to more concrete steps to building that relationship, the transactional relationship, ideally with you. Well, hey, Dan. Well, here's hey. a question for you. <laughs> How long should a funnel be running before you have a good sense of whether it's working or not, uh, whether it requires tweaking? Oh, man, you're going to make me be that it depends guy. Uh, I, I hate it when the people say that, uh, but it, it kind of does. But I, I do have an answer to that. Um, the answer is uh, it depends. Um, but uh, it, I do think um, people have to keep in mind that, you know, different funnels for different goals are going to make different timelines. So let me give you an example. And if I already told this story, stop me. Please do. Uh, but uh, <laughs> like I was doing a presentation and the presentation, let's call that sort of the, you know, that's the, uh, what, uh, what's the, the, the thing that we just, uh, not the fuel, the, the lead engine, the, the traffic store. Gosh brains escaping. Let's call the presentation the traffic store for the time being. Um, well, after right in at the end of that presentation, then I started a text message marketing funnel. So how, was, how big does it have to be at that point for me to judge it as a success? Because if they filled out, if they if people said, okay, I want to get a certain number of extra things from this presentation by texting a certain you know, word to this number, then they would get a link to the presentation. Now, if somebody didn't do that much, then you really are kind of like, well, how qualified, interested are they at that point? Maybe not, you haven't done enough qualification perhaps, but at least, you know, you're, you're going to know pretty quickly if, if this is a person who wants to continue talking to you. So, you know, that's just an example of how short and compressed a timeline can be when you do a funnel. Other types of things, you know, can be a little more elaborate. Um, I think if you're doing things that, that relate to lead qualification and lead capture, then absolutely it's going to take you you know, probably a few more weeks to really evaluate that thing so, because there's a lot of ins and outs that are going to need to happen. You know, let's say that you have an email sequence. Your email sequence and just that component, you know, you could have six or seven touches there. Now, six or seven touches where we're not just changing up the subject line, hopefully, either. So, you know, that's where some different things that they can download. Again, kind of where Jen was going with what she was saying, there's certain checkpoints that you got to measure there. And I don't think if they don't make it to the end, I don't think it's a bad funnel. 
I don't. I think that it's something where you have to look at it and say, okay, they made it this far. Maybe I need to step in and make a phone call, make an email, do a little bit more, you know, personal nurturing going on at that point. I do not think a funnel should be set it and forget it, put my feet up and let's, you know, let's wait until it, it rains. I, I just, I don't think that's going to happen. So I do think you, you have to look at number one, you have to think there are probably some different types of funnels you should be doing. Presentation funnel could be one lead capture funnel, lead qualification funnel. Um, I'm sure a few others based on your tactics, uh, an ebook, uh, kind of thing or, or something like that. Uh, certainly a try funnel. And all of those are going to have different measurements. The last thing I'm going to say on it, though, is it's never perfect. It is a, There is no such thing in my mind as a perfect funnel because I think you're always tweaking. I think you're always, you know, trying little pieces of it. You know, I was thinking about this as you were asking, you know, if you guys have ever been to like the Golden Corral, like when you're, you're like, you ever go to that place and you're like, when you're thinking about constructing your funnel, the, the, the whole funnel that I see sometimes reminds me of the golden corral. Like if you were taking a plate up and like you're trying to load up everything in one trip, like you, you that would be impossible and gross. So, um, so really, obviously you haven't been there with a child. Kids can do uh, that really well. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was wondering how you were going to tie that together. Yeah. I love it. No, it's exactly like that. There's, there's just, it, it's like, Funnels, you like you just got to take one plate. Okay, this is my little part of this funnel. I'm gonna work on this for a little bit. Then I'll go back to the funnel. Okay, I'm gonna work on it a little bit. Oh, here's the offer. I'll go back. Multiple trips to the funnel, you know, buffet. Build it out. Like, like, don't don't try to load it all up at once because you'll just kind of make yourself sick. But you could have multiple funnels and multiple plates at the Golden Corral, couldn't you? Well, yes, you could. <laughs> we you don't could. need to go down. I, mean, <laughs> I wouldn't like load up on the chocolate fountain stuff at the <laughs> in the beginning. But anyway, like the, the the whole point is, and there is a point um, that you know, I, I really do think that if if you're a person that's coming into this concept for the first time, it don't be overwhelmed by the the pieces because there are six or seven pieces, mm -hmm. and the measurements for how you're going to do funnels are going to be different too. So stick with it and tweak it and it's it's an ongoing process hey dan can can i add one thing to that and contradict you slightly well i was waiting somebody's got to oh. do it <laughs> it was so, jen no. last time i mean <laughs> <laughs> i agree with everything you said about about um about the tracking and the time and the one thing i would say is that anytime you're paying for traffic so Google ads, Facebook ads, whatever it is, that can be almost immediate monitoring and optimization because you know within a day whether that sucker's working, that ad is working or not. Because if you're not getting any clicks on your ad or if it's the return on investment of that ad is so low, um, you know, you you should probably look at the ad, the ad copy, what, you know, how it's optimized. Um, and fix that because that's the top of your funnel. And if that's broken, nothing's coming through. Well, uh, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, uh, particularly if it's a very specific one, like a certain, you know, if, if you have people who are right there and ready to buy, you know, sometimes they're, you can tell they're not in the research mode keywords as much as mm -hmm. the, you know, pricing or cost or, you know, really some of those things that trigger um, a thought on, I'm, I'm ready to, to buy, I just need to know where. Um, you know, the, yes, I agree. I think they, that can be so much more immediate. Um, so yeah, that I see you there. I, All I'm right. with you. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's you, not really you, contradicting. You, we're, we're still friends. Uh, yeah. 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 No. <laughs> so Paul, okay. We, we, we know what success will look like. We're reporting and measuring our funnel. What do we need to do to optimize our funnel now? That depends on what your data is telling you. Um, data, what's that? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And you know, it, uh, Dan and Jen actually touched on this a little bit, but when Dan was talking about the the emails, 
let's say if if you have an offer in those emails and no one's taking advantage of the offer, may, maybe the offer is not good enough. If people are dropping off at a certain point in the funnel, maybe there's an issue with your email copy. If people are taking action, you know, Dan had said just maybe they, if someone doesn't go all the way through the funnel, well, if they take action in the middle of the funnel, they're not necessarily, you don't need them to go all the way through the funnel. So it, it you really have to look at what's happening within the different steps of the funnel, where people are dropping off and say, okay, maybe my email copy isn't good. Maybe that needs to be tweaked. Maybe the offer isn't that good. Maybe I think it's good, but obviously the prospects don't think it's that good. So it really comes down to, you have to look at what's happening within the different steps of the funnel. And that will give you an idea of where and what you need to, to change and optimize. Well, and as Ian said, it could be that the offer is perfectly fine. It's just who you're targeting to get that offer in front of is, is, is jacked up. So you need to go in and address that. Yes. Cool. Thanks, Paul. Jen, I'm, I'm sure some of our listeners, <laughs> I'm sure some of our listeners are feeling a bit overwhelmed by the whole funnel process. It, it is a lot of moving parts um, and there's a lot involved. If a business owner doesn't want to build and measure their funnel and optimize their funnel, um, how would they go about finding a partner um, to help them in this, a guide? Uh, and what would they look for? Mm, absolutely. Um, well, I was just thinking about that. So if someone calls up today and says to me, you know, hey, we need we need a funnel, I'm going to think one of two things. Either they've been running funnels and they're just having some trouble or they're, you know, they, 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 they're at capacity, they need some help with their, their funnel and there really are, you know, a quite sophisticated marketing operation. The other side, you know, the other point of view I'd have is, have you just heard about this funnel thing? Like you heard about Facebook ads, like you heard about this, like you heard about that, right? So they like have on a mean, podcast. That's <laughs> just on a podcast. <laughs> I need a funnel. Can, I, can you sell me a funnel? Um, so that, that, that's one of the things. So I would say for the business owner uh, to call up a, a marketing firm to ask for a funnel, I think uh, the warning to you would be if they said, okay, no problem, that would be a warning because. Um, with the funnel, it, there's going to be, you know, a few questions that have to be answered that's going to back you out into wh why do you need this? How's it going to help your business? What are actually your, your business goals? And it's going to back you into strategy and how, what's the point of the, your business? What are the goals for your business and how can marketing help to get you there? And then we pull in the, you know, the different tactics here. So what, what you're going to be have to be prepared to be to to answer the question on if you if you want if you're looking for a company to handle your funnels is what are you selling what is your offer what is the end result why a funnel have you used a funnel before how did that work out why do you need a funnel now what do you think a funnel is how are you getting customers now I, I would I would say that if uh, the marketing firm or the advertising firm or the consultant that you are asking these questions of, um, or or that when you call up to ask for your funnel or you're searching around for for help with funnels, if they're not asking you those kind of questions that seem to be oh, a little bit uh, higher level than just the funnel, um, just like those offers from Gmail, I would I would run away. Um, the the funnel in order to work well is a, a part of a whole marketing machine that's going to help your business. And some of the questions or some of the things that, that uh, the team is going to need to know in order to construct your funnel properly is wh where's your website? Do you have a website? How are you different from your competition? What are the colors? What are the graphics so we get the ads right? What is your offer? What is the tone of voice of your company? What is the end result? What is the price point? Uh, is there anything leading up into that price point? What's your typical sales cycle? So there's going to be a whole bunch of marketing and business questions that need to be answered in order, even if you have the most technical folks working on your funnel. So that whole lecture to say, um, if you don't want to do it, go to a reputable marketing consultant or marketing firm and start to ask about uh, what it would take to do a, a funnel for your business 
and be on alert that the, the person answering your, your questions is asking you questions back about, you know, your general business and what, what you're looking to achieve, not just, yes, we can do it for you. We'll get it online by next Tuesday. Yes. Can I disagree with, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, was, I just want to mess with you. I, 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 I do have to disagree with that a little bit. I oh, think oh that, geez, here we go. All right, that's look, cool. Look, that's cool. Part of the beauty That's of cool. funnels is it's a, it's a systematic approach mm -hmm. to generating leads. Mm -hmm. And a, a quality company is already going to have built several systematic funnels that are, that, that are replicable, mm -hmm. that will accelerate the process. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. uh, these are based on best practices. These are based on niche or industry experience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and so I, I think there's a, re a very robust library. So maybe a question you ask is what kind of a funnel library do you have when you're reaching out to talk to somebody to help you with a funnel? Mm -hmm. Because there are, because you can accelerate the process dramatically. You don't have to always start at strategy first mm -hmm. uh, to get a funnel going. And so in some cases, a business, especially in this economy, they may not have the opportunity to wait for a strategy engagement they need they need fast results um they may be masking the problem i'm not saying you don't want to ever come back and circle back to do strategy but you know some of this stuff and again it depends on the sales cycle you know i mean um and what they're selling so i i think there are a whole robust set of funnels that are out there that that already do a lot of things really well whether it's a customer reactivation funnel whether it's a, you know, a, a, a review funnel, like I know Ian builds a lot of, you know, whether it's a, a niche funnel, you know, in, in the, in the painter space or in the dental, dental space, anybody who's working in those industries, they already know what's, what's working pretty well for customers in that particular niche. So. May I have oh. one minute for rebuttal? Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would love that. So how, how do you mute well, Dan? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I hear you. I hear you. I, I just, I'll, I'll put it to you this way. I, I have never circled back to strategy. That has never happened ever. So if someone says circle back to strategy, I expect that to happen on the 12th of never, uh, because I think that it's, it's, you know, it, it's fine. I get what you're saying. You know, yes, you can get right into the funnel, but these many times are people who, when you ask them about their ideal client, will say, well, I'm a financial person. So really anyone looking to get financial services is what I'm after, or pretty much five segments that means everybody and anybody. And I think that's just a really hard thing for you to suddenly say, okay, um, is this is this a true lead that we're getting in here? Like, okay, let's do a funnel, but what is this lead? Sometimes they don't know what a lead is. They don't know what their close rate is. They always make the close rate better than what it actually is. And you kind of want to, you know, um, you kind of want a common ground here. Um, I, I think kind of between what both of you are saying, where, I think that marketing firm has got to say, okay, let's look at, you know, this, this window of time, let's just say six months of what is absolutely the most important things that we should be doing. And one of them may be a funnel, but one of them should also be some sort of strategy here. It doesn't have to be a three month endeavor to do a strategy, but let's do something. So we're on, everybody's on the same page as far as the plan. And then we can kind of go into this and look at our ideal client and messaging and things like that. Um, because sometimes it's like, okay, our, our funnel is working, I guess, but what, who are we getting in and, and who do we want to get in the most of? And I think if you have that, then everybody's moving in the same direction. So all right. that's, that's all I'm saying about it. Yeah. I, I mean, it just, it just really depends on what you're selling and who, you know who your audience is. I mean, if you sell mass to the masses, um, <clears throat> you know, like a restaurant is, is a perfect example. I mean, it's, it, you know, it's, it, it, there's always an element of strategy. What I'm saying is I think you should consider hiring somebody who already has the knowledge of your business and then, and the industry you're in 
that brings that strategy in place already to jumpstart the process. And they, if they can bake that into the funnel, you can you can hit the ground running. They, they you know, there's already strategy work that's been done. It's and just, just not, it's just not together. It's not truly <laughs> customized to the business. And I yeah. do think I do think there is a circling back. Uh, we see it all the time, um, you know, because sometimes when people hire you, they're going to hire you for a specific reason and they need to get a problem solved right away. And so if you can solve that problem, you know, then you get them into a better, better situation. Now they're ready to look at other aspects of their business and you can have a broader visionary look at what do you need to put in place from a strategy perspective. I think it's, you know, it's a balancing act, right? It's every business has different needs, you know, and, and I think, the key takeaway is you should hire somebody who could do both for you. Yeah, Absolutely. I, mean, I, I think, you know, and, I, and I'll, I'll say this is that, you know, one of the things that I, I would recommend you, you not do is buy into somebody who has, who is going to come in and, and show you 20 different things that they do without, you know, getting to know you. It, it sounds obvious, but I see it all the time. Uh, so, and I, I posted about it. I said, you know, there's the cheesecake factory approach, which is, Hey, we do everything here. So, you know, we can cover everything. And all that does is just sell convenience. That doesn't mean anything. It's just, we're full service. So I, I guess, you know, what I would say is, is that the funnel can absolutely be one of the first things you do. But the happy medium there is really, okay, what are the top three to five things that are right for us? And I think that is something that everybody can own. And, um, you know, and they don't have to put all their eggs in the basket of a funnel either. You know, as you could have the greatest funnel in the world, but putting all your eggs into that, and I'm not suggesting that's what you're saying, Ken, is just that that's just one of the things maybe there's two or three other things that we should be doing to diversify. It's no different than if you were an investor, you, you can't put it all in one thing. Yeah. Well, it, you know what, I, I, I think also too, so for the listener, we're, we're all part of the Duct Tape Marketing Network. We all have our nomenclature around Strategy First, which is an engagement for 30 or 60 days, depending on you know your industry and who you're, who you're working with. So. Uh, so definitely not. We do not have to do a strategy first, a 90 day engagement before we get a funnel at the door. Not at all. But what I'm saying is we can't just plug and play and I can't just give you the exact same funnel I used for a company yesterday because their email subject lines are all full of little emojis because that works for them. And when I'm dealing with B2B software, that's not going to cut it for these guys. So what I'm saying is when we get the look, the feel, the right copy, where we're going to go, I mean, that's going to take more thinking than, yeah, we're just going to plug and play this funnel there. You know, we got to know a little bit more about, you know, your company, the tone of voice, the, you know, who we're, or who we're after to the audience. But that does not need 90 days of planning for sure. I agree yeah. with you. And, and just as a uh, listening in and hearing your guys' viewpoints, and obviously I, I, I agree with a lot of what you've said. The one thing I would, I would pull out from all of that, just to kind of encapsulate it, is that uh, anybody who's doing anything for you from a marketing perspective, without they, even if you're not en engaging them to do strategy yet, if they are not... Um, good at strategy, if that is not a core element to what they deliver to their clients, you will be hurting yourself even with just the funnel. Because there are a million people out there selling funnels, even niche funnels or niche funnels, but without the, the larger strategic um, uh, know-how to take you to the next level, if your funnel's working or if your oh. funnel's not working, um, I think that's what will hurt a small business owner over time. Everybody agree? Yeah, that is a good I would, point. I would agree with yeah. that. All right, all right. Ken's <laughs> nodding too. So I'm going to give the last question to Ken. All right. um, as we bring this funnel series to a conclusion, what final advice do you have for business owners when it comes to setting up, starting, uh, just getting started with online funnels for their business? Well, it's. I, I think it's super important to have a funnel. Um, even if it's just a simple lead capture system 
with, you know, really good follow up on, on that lead capture. And it could just literally be somebody filling out a form on your website or somebody calling your business or somebody filling out, you know, a chat widget on your website. You should be able to capture that and there should be some follow up activity that goes there. The number one thing that I think in regard to funnels is, you know, those businesses that have a list tend to do a lot better than those businesses who don't have a list. Mm -hmm. uh, the list is gold. I mean, it, it gives you the opportunity to go back and ask your customers, you know, or your prospects to buy from you again. If they haven't purchased from you before, you still have somebody who already knows you. They may have started to like you. They may have started to trust you even, but they've never decided to take action and, and try or buy from you. So it, whether they're a customer or not, having them in a list is really important. It should be it should be something that they are opting into, right? I mean, it's just not go purchase a list. I'm not talking about that. Um, you know, and then you, you with that list, you can you know you can get them to you know to become promoters of your business if they like what you do, even if they're not your right customer and they're not buying from you, they may still champion you. They may still say, oh, you know what? At a networking event, hey, I just, you know, I, 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 I interact with this company a lot. I follow what they do. They're not really right for me, but man, I think they're perfect for you. That list is golden. So you wanna put, uh, the best way to build a list is with a funnel. You know, a funnel can be really simple. It can be, making your website automated to the point where you're automatically capturing leads to put them into a system and making sure you have that follow up. But then you take it to the next level. You, you get them to the point where you're giving them something of value that is worthwhile for them to give up a valuable piece of information from themselves and either a text phone number or an email address. Although you don't even have to really do that all the time. You can run a funnel just by, pixeling somebody and retargeting them. So you don't even need to ha have them now, you know, there, there are pros and cons to doing that, but you can, you can start running Facebook ads just because some, somebody goes to your website. You never have to ask them for a piece of information. You just need to know what page or pages they were on. And then, you know, you can, you can start running ads to them. So um, the, the thing is just do it, you know, just make the effort, to get a funnel in place, it will transform your business like nothing else. And, and, and it, the beauty of it is a funnel becomes a 24-7, 365 salesperson for your business. And, you know, once you build it, it, it does just run. You can't ignore it. You have to go in. You have to optimize it. You have to pay attention to it. But once you build it, it's an asset for your business. And it's just hugely, hugely important. That's awesome. That's it. This is probably a good place to wrap right. up, guys. Um, thank you to Ken, to Dan, to Jen, and to Paul for today. And we're going to have to shorten Paul's name by one letter to make it fit this <laughs> three-letter scenario. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but this is an important topic about, about measuring and optimizing um, our online funnels. So thanks to our audience for joining us today, and we'll see you next week.